Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of the Food for Thought podcast. I'm your host, Charlize Tyler, and for my English class, I was instructed to make a podcast over the topic of my choosing. So today, I will be discussing the struggle amongst college students trying to create a safe space for themselves while still dealing with mental illness. As a psychology major, I was very excited for this project, as I'm able to go in my own direction, and it's right up my alley. I think it's also a very relevant topic in my life, as well as many other students. So let's just jump right in. Students from all over the world have a hard time dealing with mental illness while still going to college. And on top of that, even working. Research has shown 73% of students are experiencing some form of mental illness while still in college. And with such a high number, only 25% of that 73% actually seek out help. Some of the topics I'd like to talk about today are GPA, going to class on time, as well as the lack of resources around campus. Some things that I think can have a big impact on students' grades are um, getting class on time, as well as staying up late, making sure that things are done or they're prepared for tests and exams that are happening that next day or even the day after. And sometimes with that being such like a difficult task for some for some students when you're staying up all night or staying up even late just to have to get up within three hours or so to go to class at seven or eight or even nine o'clock. So I think it's kind of hard for students to get up and function while not having the most sleep for myself. I think I'm having to get up early, but still staying up super late. It has has had a big impact on me because I'm having to go to class at 930, which isn't super early, but it's not super late. So I up all night sometimes till five or six in the morning and then hoping to get that last amount of sleep that I have until I have to get up at eight o'clock just to get ready for class. I think it's hard for me to actually get to class on time and still be present in the class and learn the things I need to learn. And sometimes with this, I think professors see you as a a lazy or unmotivated student when there's a lot of underlying factors that they don't know, they don't see. So I think it's sometimes harder for students to be successful in that class or have a good impression on these professors when we're dealing with so much behind the scenes. It can be very stressful balancing classes and academic life while also having a social life when dealing with mental illnesses such as depression, anxiety, BPD, and many others. And I think that's a big factor for me and as well as other of my friends. It's a hard time trying to be social and make new friends when most of the time you're stuck in your dorm room finishing up homework or going to other buildings on campus to get the resources you need. With such a weight on our shoulders, I think it's hard for students to become social and get out there and do extracurricular activities when most of the time when they are finished with their assignments and classes for the day they want to sleep or relax so it's hard to get out there and be social and make new friends when you have so much weight on your shoulders already so it's stressful for you to make the time for yourself or other people as well as seeking help this comes in this plays into the lack of resources it's not necessarily just seeking help but as well as having help from the professors or other faculty members. But a main thing is in articles, many articles I read, not a lot of campuses or universities have the resources needed for students with mental illnesses or that are going through things that they need help from like professionally. And on my campus, I know there's a campus counselor but it's not very talked about. It's not something that all the students know about. I think I talked to a friend about it one time and they didn't even realize it was a thing that they could do. It's 
and the only reason why I know it is because I'm a psychology major and it is talked about in many of my classes. So I think it's harder for students to seek out help when they don't even know that the help is being provided and oftentimes it's help that you have to sign up for and you're on wait list. You're waitlisted. You're waiting for a, an appointment when you need that appointment right then and there. For me, I never really used the resource for a therapist or the campus counselor as I had my own, but I think it could have been a great resource for like going to talk to somebody like in person as I was doing it like over a Zoom call or like a FaceTime call. But other than that, it's not a talked about thing. Many students don't know about it and it's harder for students to even make time for that kind of stuff when their schedules are so jam-packed with classes, studying or making sure homework is done. Even athlete, athletes, they are up at 6 a.m., sometimes even 5, and after that, after when it's 8 o'clock, they're out and going to class. Classes can range from 8 a.m. to sometimes 3, 3 p.m., and after that, it's practice, and you gotta eat sometime in that day, in that time period, and then it's straight to the books, or straight to the gym, or something of that nature. So, one thing that we're seeing, especially not just in college, but in our, our society today, is what's called burnout. Many people are feeling burnt out or exhausted from their jobs now. So we're seeing a large majority of people quitting their jobs and focusing on other careers or just focusing on their family, which is in turn collapsing our economy. But college burnout is the feeling of exhaustion or loneliness. College burnout is defined in the article from the best colleges refers to an extended period of extreme fatigue that often results in a decline in academic performance. In college, burnout can be triggered by a variety of factors, but most often caused by overwhelming work demands and prolonged levels of intense stress. Sometimes I feel like many college students are burnt out or have lower performance, which can affect their mental illness because they're not at their full potential they're not doing what as well as they could be doing in many assignments or tests and this can lead in again poor academic performance as well as a decline in interest of social activities such as hanging out with friends seeing family or just even being around people in general in turn this can cause high functioning depression and anxiety as well as isolating yourself in social settings. I think for me, one of my biggest challenges was socializing with others. As I came from a small town where everybody knows everybody and you can get from one place to another in less than a minute. But also it was such a big change from going from such a small place, school and town to a roughly like pretty big size town and university I didn't socialize very often I didn't get involved in any extracurricular activities very often either and I definitely didn't make very many new friends because I came to college with two of my like friends from high school so I wasn't really worried about like making new friends but on top of that I think I wasn't able to do much of the stuff because I had assignments or work that I needed to do in order to be successful in the academic area. But I think that put a strain on my depression and my anxiety as I became socially, not socially awkward, but I didn't necessarily want to socialize because I didn't really know how to talk to people. And I've been dealing with depression and anxiety for most of my life now, so I think it coming to college it kind of heightened it as I was away from my mom and away from friends that I've known for a very long time and I'm a very family oriented person so not being around my mom 
kind of put a strain on my mental illness as I felt very lonely and isolated. And I think that came from a lot of people, a lot of college students. As I'm only two hours away from home, there's many other college students that are 15 to even 22 hours away from their moms or their family. So it's harder for them to even see them. Whereas I could just run home and be back in time. But every time I think I would be able to go and see her or I'd be able to go see family, I would have homework or I would have something I needed to do for school to make sure that was done first. And school's always been a priority for me. So I think it was hard to, yes, have to put myself first, but also still make time for friends and family and activities that I still enjoyed to do. I think first semester and second semester were completely different for me. As first semester, I was definitely like getting into the college life, learning new things, learning new people, getting to know everybody. And especially the classes, first semester, they weren't as vigorous as they were second because I was just taking like prerequisites and classes that weren't extremely hard but still required a lot of my time but second semester is completely different i had multiple classes for my major as a psychology major i think you learn a lot of new stuff that you didn't even think was going to be something you learned as like a psychology major if that makes any sense i think a lot of the times i'd come out of class and i'd have to go back over the powerpoints or rewatch the class on Panopto so I could like actually engulf what the topic we were talking about that day and I often think that's a form of I think that's also just a symptom of me not sleeping and me just being unmotivated to do much because with mental illness I think it takes up a lot of your time it takes up a lot of your thinking i think you often are stuck in your head a lot so on top of your going through things already and then putting new information and very vigorous topics it's harder to just kind of soak up that information and feel, feel like you actually learned something I know my major wasn't as hard as many other majors or as vigorous, but I think it was still a pretty difficult major as you, there's so much information that you need to know. But I think that's another stressful thing about college life. Sometimes I feel like students wonder if they're taking the right major, if they're doing this all for nothing, in quotations, nothing. And that oftentimes can make you feel highly stressed and unmotivated as you feel like you're not doing the right thing or you're not putting in as much effort as you could be because you don't know if this is even the major you're going to end up taking or this is the career you're going to even up, end up picking. Coming back to the topic of college burnout. I think many students feel burnt out, even with summer right around the corner. I think many college students are feeling burnt out just from moving out of the dorm and then finally having the time of de-stress. And they're still like in this mode of, oh, I have to go back in four months. I need to use this time wisely to get ready for that, but also have time to hang out with friends and do the things I need to do for myself. And sometimes burnout can look very different to an outside perspective. And it can be often overlooked a lot of the times. Many people see burnt out as feeling stressed or tired. However, it's a completely different feeling as many times people can feel this exhaustion or this overwhelming stress but they still continue to push forward which can result in 
fatigue and sometimes even just like irritability. Some of the other symptoms of college burnout are lack of interest in social slash extracurricular activities, feeling lonely, as well as even lack of motivation for daily activities such as washing your face, taking a shower, cleaning up your dorm room, getting out, eating. Sometimes those things are hard to do when you are so stressed and overwhelmed with other things that are going on going on in your life. A word to an article on the Clay Center for Young Healthy Minds, amongst a third of college students report having felt depressed or even have a hard time functioning. I agree with this as we get long further into the year and the classes get more vigorous and more difficult. I think college students have a feeling of isolation or anxiety for an upcoming test scores or even what their grades will turn out to look like from midterms to even finals week. I think this kind of ties in overlaps with the fact of having to stay up late studying or working on homework and as well as just like not having a great social circle to like unwind and relax with. I think with this day and age, many students or even younger teens are more open and honest with their emotions or their anxiety and depression. I know that I could probably go up to one of the people in my college or one of my friends and we could have a discussion about our mental illnesses and what is going on in our lives whereas older people like some like our professors or like parents even have a hard time understanding what we're going through and overlook it as being lazy or unmotivated and I think this puts a strain on students as we don't seek out for help in the fear of being judged or thought of differently and this goes for peers and sometimes faculty an overwhelming amount of stress can cause high functioning depression and anxiety and even before college or the new experiences we've all been through i think a lot of our mental illnesses and stress and being overwhelmed came from the hardships we've dealt with within our society through recent years especially through the pandemic for me i was quarantined for almost a year and i was left to deal with my mental illnesses and my feelings of loneliness all by myself as i couldn't hang out with friends or seek help so being thrown in a new environment was especially harder for me to make friends and meet new people as i was very I became very socially awkward or just stayed by myself and while sometimes it's a good thing to just have some time by yourself to relax and de-stress I think prolonged amounts of isolation or just being alone can have effect, an effect on a person's mental illness for such a long period of time. I think I could talk about this topic for the remainder of the podcast. But it might be beneficial to bring in some guests on to talk about their time here in college. Please welcome my friends slash doormates, Leilani Pese and Jalila Smith. Okay, so today I was discussing... Um, the struggles amongst college students trying to create a safe space for themselves while still dealing with me. And I brought uh, two of my friends along to kind of discuss their experience in college as the year comes to an end. Today we have... Uh, my name is Jalela Smith. Um, I'm a... I major in uh, health and exercise science and I'm also on a part of the track and field team here. Uh, my name is Leilani and I'm a vocal music education major. Okay, so as a part of a track team, Jalela, how do you like rate your experience from one to ten dealing with academics as well as like sports? I'd probably rate it like a seven or eight maybe. It is difficult at times trying to um, 
juggle the two together. And like, on top of that, like mental illness, feeling like isolated from your family or friends, because I know we are two hours away from home, so you don't get to see your family very often. How does that make you feel? Um, it's it's different. It's been something I've had to adapt to. Um, it's it's not really as difficult as most people, since I am closer than most people are from from home. But it is definitely a struggle sometimes when you can't make certain things because of sports or you have a test or things of that nature. So we do live in a dorm together and we went to high school together and we also like we've been close friends for quite some time. I knew Jaleva was going to play um, like do track and field like through college but I feel like sometimes it's hard for her to manage sports while also like having grades on top of that and classes to go to. I feel like that's like kind of for everybody like student athletes because you have to make grades, like you have to make the grades to play those kind of sports, so. Yeah, it kind of like goes like hand in hand just because if you, like during your academics, you want to do good because this is ultimately going to be your career, but obviously you've got to do good to be in the sports, but then the sports aspect also plays into the grades because you're trying to better both at the same time and it's hard mm -hmm. to juggle, like. Um, I know from like previous experiences, uh, I mean, coming from high school, I played three sports all four years. So yeah. I've always had to deal with juggling sports and ath uh, athletics and academics at the same time. But um, it's a very hectic schedule. Um, you have to wake up, for instance, we have weights at six in the morning. I wake up at five to go to to go to weights. I wake up at the same time because of her alarms. Um, <laughs> I had to wake up, go to weights. After that, I have an 8 a.m. There's no getting to reset, going to go take a nap. I have to go straight to class. Right after class, there's another class. You have to find time to eat. Then right after you eat, you have to, 20 minutes later, you have practice again. So then you're doing practice, and you're practicing for two, three hours at a time. So then, basically a full schedule of five days a week or four days a week, yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, we do, I know like here in Missouri Western we have gold Fridays, but that doesn't apply to sports. We yeah. still have to, you know, practice during those days that we technically have off. So it's never really like an off day. Mm -hmm. It's like more of like your sports is a job because you do have to perform well because some people... Like, that's how they're paying for college. Like, you yeah. get scholarships for this. So, that then ties back into, like, if you don't do good in sports, your academics fail. If you don't do good in academics, your sports decline. And um, it is very challenging at times just because after a long day, you might, you know, the average person would want to go to sleep and, mm -hmm. you know, chill out. But you have to go and study and do your quizzes and all the all of that stuff so it's a lot of late nights it's a lot of uh staying up till two three in the morning and then going to sleep for two hours and doing it all over again mm -hmm. so really the only time you do have to yourself is the weekends and then when it is the weekend that's whenever you can focus on your academics yeah. really so and that's if you don't have a meet that's yeah. it that's yeah. it yeah that is if i don't have a meet on weekends because that is meet day so um yeah so we have articles from multiple multiple sources talking about how student athletes they feel like their af their athletics are more important in their grades just because like you said that's like their job or that can be something very important to them and I have an article from Times talking about how students, they have more time to do, like, their athletic stuff, but also they have to find time to, like, make up for schoolwork, tests, studying for grade, studying for tests and stuff like that. And I feel like it's, it's kind of challenging as 
you get closer on, like, move on more into college because you have to, there's more vigorous classes you have to take for your major? Yeah, uh, like the Times article said, um, asking student athletes, like, because there's a big difference between the sports and the athlete, uh, the sports and the academics, of course. Um, I feel like both, both like the average person would rate them pretty high because they're both important. But um, just basing this off of like, this is our first year in college, so first semester wasn't very good for me, at least. Uh, I suffered a concussion, yeah. had to recover from a concussion, while also trying to keep up with the team but keeping up with my academics but not being able to do as much as because well as of the adjusting, concussion adjusting to college yeah as well because that was my first semester here so that caused a decline in my academics just because of the fact that I couldn't do anything because of the concussion so um it did cause me to uh decline in that area which is no one wants that obviously yeah. so then again when I declined in the academics it showed in the sports as well mm -hmm. um, wasn't able to compete like I wanted to my first year because of certain things that occurred so um, yeah that can be pretty tough especially your first year you're coming in you're like all right I'm ready to compete at the collegiate level then you get hit with a concussion then you're like, okay, so what do we do from here? Then you have to make up all the work and all the tests and everything of that nature while still trying to maintain your grades in your other classes. But in the back of your head, you know you still have this concussion, so there's not much you can really do. So it feels like you're at a standstill sometimes. But second semester, um, I did improve a bit, um, not having a concussion anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, got cleared from that so I made it a priority to be on top of my academics just because didn't want to fall down the same path that I did first semester that's not to say things won't change as you go into your second year or your third semester of college you're probably going to be competing oh so you're yeah uh, yeah uh, definitely uh, because in a way it was helpful that I wasn't able to compete because, yeah. uh, yes, I am practicing, but I'm not, like, I I can't go to the meets, so then that, that time set aside yeah, that time work. is for my schoolwork because I don't have to worry about sports that day. Yeah. So those are very few days that we do, but um, those days were really helpful to get caught back up um, and, you know, keep the ball moving. Yep. So Leilani... Being a music major, I know it's about the same, like, vigorous work as you are spending a lot of your nights in Potter, just, like, practicing music, going over, like, the things you need for that next morning. And I just, I feel like as a roommate, I see, like, how you struggle with coping with, like, keeping up with friends and family, while also having that time set aside for you to work on homework and work on all the stuff you need to get done for class it, it's definitely obviously it's not as uh, physically tiring as waking up yeah. at 6 a.m yeah going definitely to practice. but a, as a music major you know i have to learn things like different instruments i had a class where i had to learn nine different instruments this year mm -hmm. i had to start learning the piano and get my basic uh, keyboarding skills down and on top of that you have things like music theory and uh, oral skills, just making sure that I'm staying on top of my own uh, repertoire as a vocal major, it, it definitely takes a lot of time. And I definitely did have a uh, lot of trouble just finding time for homework and also to be able to hang out with you guys because I, mm -hmm. I love just being, I'm definitely a people's person, so I like being around you guys and I like being able to, you know, it, it's kind of a relaxing part of the day when I get to sit down and just hang out with you guys. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of hard trying to balance the two because there's some nights where I'll spend close to four or five hours just in Potter Hall working on uh, different assignments and making sure that I have different things perfected 
for the week that's ahead of me because just yes we do have gold fridays but just like in athletics i also have things to do on fridays i have music labs and i have a like different uh, tutoring groups just to make sure that I'm keeping up with it. Not to mention like our schedules don't really align no, because no. of the, I mean, if we are looking at it, uh, my, it's like in order, like the schedule of like busyness, it's like yeah. me, then Leilani, then Charlize. So it's like every time they're coming in, I'm going out or mm -hmm. like whenever I'm coming in, they're going out, you know, it's it's very hit and miss. Like, I there's... feel like whenever I'm going, getting out of class, which I get out of class at 2, Jalayla's going to practice, Yes. I'll get back, and Lonnie's coming back in, but then she has something to go to because I'm a music, like a vocal lesson. Yeah, my vocal lesson. And then those will last for four or five, so we come back and then we go to the calf. And usually time, we have time to, like, set aside just for us to, like, chill and hang out. But then in between that, there's some days when we're working on homework. We're studying for tests. Lonnie's at Potter. Jalayla's making sure she has everything she needs done for her classes that require, that are required for her major. And it's just, it's hard balancing that academic life with, while also at balancing, like, a friend. Like a social, social life. life. Yeah. yeah. It also doesn't help that... Uh, we all came from a very small town, yeah. so we were always together. It was never like a, oh, well, I'm on this side of town, so I'm not going to drive 20 minutes to yeah. go see my friends. It was like, you're five minutes away, I'll come pick you up. Right. We'll just drive around and <laughs> hang out. Yeah. It definitely it does cause a bit of a burnout, just oh, with for sure. everything. Yeah. You're trying to balance uh, keeping up your social life and getting used to college and uh, getting used to going to classes and making sure you have all your homework done. It, there's, it, it can get exhausting. I definitely feel you on the burnout part, just because of the, not only like, like you said, you're balancing your social and your academic life, but like for me per se, I'm balancing the social, the academic, and then the athletics part of it as well. Um, trying to maintain the three all together is very challenging for mm -hmm. a person especially coming into a new environment um, and like for me at least I'm I'm majoring in two things so it's not only like I have this to worry about my major I have two things to worry about I have to because I'm also doing the uh, physical therapy program mm -hmm. here so I'm trying to make sure I have everything in line so I can apply to that program and then I'm also trying to keep up uh, the grades for my bachelor's degree yep. and then I'm trying to maintain uh, the wellness of my sport so that I can perform good whenever I am able to perform so it it's it, there's it, it can get exhausting I definitely feel you on the burnout part just because of the not only like like you said you're balancing your social and your academic life but like for me per se I'm balancing the social the academic and then the athletics part of it as well um trying to maintain the three all together is very challenging for a person mm -hmm. especially coming into a new environment um and like for me at least i'm i'm majoring in two things so it's not only like i have this to worry about my major i have two things to worry about i have to because i'm also doing the uh physical therapy program mm -hmm. here so i'm trying to make sure i have everything in line so i can apply to that program and then i'm also trying to keep up uh, the grades for my bachelor's degree yep. and then I'm trying to maintain uh, the wellness of my sport so that I can perform good whenever I am able to perform so it it's definitely a lot on your plate at one time for a person I'm that's literally like 18 when we find time to sleep <laughs> because really. we never we never sleep I Sometimes I can't even tell you the like I think at least once a week, me and Jalayla will stay up all night, either studying for a test, Leilani too, but sometimes this girl, she'll pass out around five because... I can't you know, do it. Yeah. She can hang. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. No, I think one time this year that you stayed up all night, but I feel like me and Jalayla, even I've though we're doormates, like we're roommates, I think we do like play off of each other and like goof around a little bit. But it's majority studying, making sure we have everything we need to do for class. And 
by the time it's six o'clock, it's like, why go to sleep when you have to get up at eight a.m. anyways? And to then get like the class. If it's if it's like, say for instance, we stay up all night and it's like three thirty, there's no point for me to go to sleep yeah. at that point because I turn around an hour later, mm-hmm. I have practice. So you might as well get that extra hour in of studying and getting your assignments done just so that you can have some free time later on in the day and usually that free time is so you can sleep and then whenever you want to sleep it's like oh I make sure I'm up by this time yeah. so I can so I can go back to practice so it's very hectic mm-hmm. I know it isn't this way for like uh some people but it definitely was just college in general was just a culture shock yeah you, you don't in high school it's okay if you miss and then, yeah, assignment. it's okay if you miss an assignment. Because like they're like, oh, it's fine. You can yeah, just make it yeah. up later. This is this is completely different. It's, it's yeah. totally different. So those nights when we do feel like, oh, we need to stay up, it's not because we want to. It's not because we're just, like, goofing off and being like, oh, we just want to pull an all-nighter. Like, it's not like that. It's we have things we need to get done. There are, there are deadlines. There are due dates. There's this and that like we have to have all this stuff done and then also be able to go to class because being in class is ultimately what leads to your success in most classes attendance definitely does count um and i think people like they get so happy with online classes but sometimes online classes aren't even as like good as taking a class like in in person person. oh really yeah one you're not around the teacher you can't get help specifically from that teacher. No hands-on work. And then you have to, like, email them, wait for and them to email you back. Sometimes they don't email you back. So then you have to find a no different pain. source. But <laughs> you have to find a different source. Like, you have to look through your class list and see who's in that class. And then you're like, oh, okay, maybe I can ask this person. But if you don't know anyone in the class, you're, like, kind of stuck. You're like, yeah. okay, well, what and What do I do? Me, I'm not a social person, so... I'm not going to reach out to people. And I know, like, yeah, that's on me. But, like, I feel like at the same time, I need more, like, a hands-on class. I need to be in person. Like, yeah, it's tiring and it's, like, physically exhausting. But I can't do an online class and expect my grade to be where it would be if I were in person in a class. And I feel like that's it kind of coincides with us being from a smaller town where we've known each other for so long went to high school together and I think around like the second semester of high school we decided we're all going to go to uh, Missouri Western and like I love that because I wanted to be with my friends but at the same time I feel like we've all become so comfortable with the people that like we know each other so it's like yeah I mean in our town it's everyone knows everyone yeah even your teachers your teachers would let you um slack off and like Oh, it's okay. Like, you, you can They're turn like, it oh, in I tomorrow. Know how, because... I know how this is because I know you have this, this, and this going on. But this, like, they in don't college, know. they don't they don't know. Mm-hmm. And, like, not being rude or anything, but they don't really too much care. Like, that's not their yeah. job to care. Their job is to come and teach. teach. Come and teach. They so, have like, it's so many students. It's so hard. But I think that, like, we've... I, I think we've made a couple friends. I'm not going to sit here and say we're losers, but I think that we've isolated ourselves. Wow. <laughs> we've, like, <laughs> we've isolated ourselves, or we just don't socialize as much as we could. But at the same time, I feel like we don't have the opportunity to socialize with how much work the, the, the lurk, hello, with how much workload we're put, like, put on. I don't oh, know. Oh, for sure. I mean, first semester, I would this is embarrassing to say out loud, but I did get put on um, academic probation because I was focusing too much on, oh, I want to make friends. I want to do this. I want to do that. I had a job and it it, like caused me to work late nights. I didn't go to class and things like that can be ultimately detrimental. And I kind of had a wake up call in the beginning of second semester. Like, Hey, this is real. Mm -hmm. If I don't get these things where they need to be, I'm going to be kicked out. I'm not going to be able to do what I really want to do. Not only that, I'm not going to be able to be with my best friends in school. Mm-hmm. So I kind of settled for the fact of I'm okay with not having the best social life because at the end of the day, I get to come home to you guys. 
just, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> just playing off of what Leilani said, yeah. Uh, the whole like first semester, obviously I had a concussion, so it wasn't like that. I got that around maybe Halloween or something like that. So, um, man, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> um, so I was like, I had the concussion, and it was like. Okay, so now I, I I have no choice but to sit here because I'm sensitive to light. I'm sensitive to all these things. Um, then turn around, I have a death in the family. That's someone that's really close to me. Mm-hmm. So then it's like now I have no motivation to do anything because I'm grieving. And I think that Leilani and Shirley's can agree. I didn't really have time to grieve because I was yeah. I had to focus on what was presented before me. Um, I was making sure that my application, like I was doing things for my application to be right because I did apply to the PTA program before I even came to Missouri Western and got declined. So now I'm trying to worry about building that up. And um, <laughs> and now I'm trying to uh, figure out like, okay, like what do I do in the sports now? Like this is not, this is my first year ever being coached by this coach. So I don't mm-hmm. know how he is about things of that nature and I can't go to practice I can't look at a screen I can't look at my phone so it's really like you you're not able to do anything it's not like I don't want to do anything then you're stuck in a place of like I need to do homework but I physically cannot like I think that was like kind of a hard time for you because yeah you were dealing with that death in your family and you were dealing with a concussion and you couldn't like genuinely she couldn't even like open her computer because it like hurt so much we had to have the lights off most of the time because she her head would hurt all the time and i feel like very sensitive to light yes and as like like the school year went on the homework started racking up she had multiple assignments for multiple classes that she didn't like weren't wasn't able to finish so and teachers like gave her that leeway and let her like have time to finish those assignments but it was at the same time she's still dealing with going back to sports like after Christmas break and still having classes that have other assignments to do while also dealing with um, last semester's assignments that she still has to work on yeah like um there was a bunch of classes that uh, there was a class in specific that I I needed to pass it was because coming into college um I had a lot of uh what's it called High school, college, 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 college yeah. credits. There we go. Yeah. So it wasn't like I'm starting, like you know, as a freshman, like per se. I'm already a sophomore. I'm already taking classes going into my major. So it's not like, oh, I can, you know, this is just a gen ed. So I didn't really like. It was like, no, you need to get this grade because this is one of your major classes. Mm-hmm. So being that I have to come back to uh, after Christmas break start a new semester then also worry about the class work from the previous semester while also trying to get back in the swing of things uh being able to go outside again being able to do work again and it's hard from not looking at a computer screen for two months and then going and that's the only thing you're doing for f- four or five hours at a time so i think a lot of the times mm-hmm. we overlook mm-hmm. mental illness mm-hmm. as society has put it down grow up you can do better everyone goes through it get over it but at the same time I feel like college students being thrown in to like a completely new environment having so much to do I feel like that puts like a like a weight on someone's shoulders especially how young we are like going into college you're 18 you were 18 you're 19 Mm -hmm. like we we were 19 and 18 like going into college and we already had so much on our like shoulders i like want to ask if you don't mind like is there any like mental illnesses that you guys wouldn't mind talking about on this podcast that you think that like oh, for sure. could bring light to like college students going through mental illness while still having to for deal sure. with college classes making friends socializing not being able to see family stuff like that because i know that like i could go on a complete whole rant about this stuff but i needed to kind of get some more insight from other people for sure i mean i i personally uh have dealt with um depression and anxiety for a really long time and 
I was also diagnosed with um, bipolar disorder when I was 14. Obviously, it was early onset, and they haven't really checked in on it since because it hasn't been too bad. But it it definitely puts a strain on everything because I get so much anxiety about am I making my family proud? Yes. Am I doing what I actually want to do in life? Or am I doing what I think other people want me to do? And there's also on top of that, like, the lack of sleep just throws throws you for a loop. Yeah. You can't really have a, like, sleep is supposed to be the reset. It's supposed to kind of, you know, you're down, you're put to bed, and you wake up in the morning, you feel refreshed, you feel nice, it's a new day, but when... It's definitely not like that now. It's not. It's, it's like, like once you wake up, you're like, okay, you gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta yeah. go. Like, it's, no it's never-ending cycle. Calm like, down. Um, definitely, like, I've never been diagnosed with anything, but, um, coming from, like, uh, my family's background, like, uh, it's more known in, like, African Americans, uh, like, culture, like, whenever children, like, talk about, not children, or, like, teenagers or whatever, they talk about, um, you know, they try to talk about their mental illness and things of that nature, um, mostly in the black community, it's just, like, thrown off or pushed off into like oh maybe you're thinking that because such and such has this or like you don't really have that so it's like you're dealing with things that you think you might have but then your family's saying like nah you don't really have it you'll just get over it it's just a slump or something like that and um like in high school I was I was a pretty good student in the National Honor Society um always made good grades so me coming to college and failing a class right off first semester that's not normal for me at all so obviously that put me down and then I'm like worried about making my parents proud like I'm a first generation student so this is I'm the first person in our family to go to college so I'm like there's so much weight on me because I'm like I have to do this for my family because I'm the first one to ever do it I have to do it right I have to do it perfect because if I don't then who else will yeah. So it's like, it's to the point of like, my parents, they're they're getting up there, obviously. So mm-hmm. it's like you know they are gonna depend on me and for like some time, like when they get older. So it's like now I have to worry about being the best person that I can be for them, but also not making them disappointed in any shape, form, or fashion yeah. at all. But I feel like sometimes that's hard for you as a person to, like, because you have to worry about your own well-being. You have to worry about what's going on with you. And I feel like, yeah, you have to make people proud. You have to, like, make sure you got, like, you are able to go to college and you're able to, like, be successful and stuff. But at the same time, I feel like people, like, overlook depression and anxiety as, like, oh, wanting attention or you're just lazy or you don't want to do things but I feel like if as a person going through so much stress from making sure their grades are good making sure that they pass their semester with like A's and B's whatever it whatever it takes to pass that semester I feel like it puts a weight on a person when grades don't come out as you wanted them to be like for me my first semester wasn't my greatest semester I'm super close to my mom, like, that's my ride or die, period, (laughs) but I think I had a hard time staying here, and they can vouch for me, I didn't, I left a lot of the time to go see my mom and other things, but I feel like at the same time, that put a weight on my shoulders for me having to deal with being with my mom, but also I need to be here working on my homework, doing the things I need to do to make sure I pass those grades. I passed those classes, I'm sorry. Personally, I I was blessed with a mother who knows a lot of times there's a deeper issue. Yeah. To, she'll, like, call me and she'll be like, How are, how's your grades going? And, you know, like, I'll sit there and rant just, oh, this professor or, like, this assignment, this, this and that. And, you know, she kind of, like, it, it's very nice to have someone who's, um, reassuring and Mm -hmm. someone who's like you know things are a little harder for you than they are for some people so like don't be too hard on yourself and 
also I feel you about leaving all the time because I am in a long distance relationship right now and even that causes a lot so of much stress because especially at the beginning of the semester you know I had these thoughts of like oh we're not talking as much like is my relationship going to just fall off the face of the planet and is it going to be okay like there's so many other things that go into mental health and I think that being in college just makes it that much more harder to deal with Mm -hmm. because there's personally when I get very sad or like in my feelings just like feeling down in the dumps I don't have motivation to go to class Mm -hmm. I don't have motivation to sit up all night and write a 10 page paper I don't I don't have the motivation to do all of that but you kind of have to the sit there time. and it's gotta it, be done. Yeah, yeah. I have this like bad habit of just like kind of tricking myself into saying like it's not real. I'm just gonna do my homework. I'm just gonna keep on going, and I will be okay. These feelings, these thoughts, they're they're gonna go away. But that at the same time, I feel like you we do that. A lot of people, I feel like they do that and they think oh, like, oh, it's boy. fine. They push it away. Push it down. You push it down until you resent other people yeah. or you completely explode and... You, That's like, my problem. <laughs> like, As I bottle it up and then it all just comes out one day and I'm... Oh, for and sure. Becomes, I, that is the type of person I am. Yeah. Like, I... I I'm a type of person that don't... I don't really like to show my emotions mm-hmm. to anyone unless you're really close with me. So, like... Um, it becomes big, more of an issue than, it, like... It needed to be at the point whenever you could have gotten those feelings out to or begin talk with. to someone. Yeah, like coming from my background, um, like my parents have always taught me, you know, you're you're a young lady now, you need to be independent, blah blah blah, all these things. And I've learned to be independent on my own, but also me having five other siblings that are not really. You know, they're up They're up in age. They're, my parents aren't really worried about them. I'm the only one in the house. So when I did leave, yeah, they missed me a lot. I was like, I think it was a harder toll on my mom than it was yeah. me, for for sure. But um, it was definitely a factor of, like, uh, she her calling me, like, almost every other day. But me not having time to talk because I'm like, Mom, I got to get this done. I have to get this done. And whenever, like, say my other roommates do, like, go home, I'm here because oh I can't go I have practice oh I can't go because I have to do this I can't go because I have to do this and this and this and then my parents are worried about me thinking like oh I hope you're doing okay I hope you're not like falling behind and all this stuff and then it gets in your head of like oh am I really getting behind because maybe I am maybe I'm not you know doing things like I normally am Mm -hmm. which I'm not because I don't have that free reign to just oh, I have practice, but then, like, afterwards, I can chill out because I know that my grades are up to par. It's, like, after this, there's another thing. There's always something else that has to be done. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, like, there's never a period where I'm, like, okay, this day, I don't have to do anything at all. Like, it was never a sense of, like, like, relaxation, I guess. Um, It's, it's, like, actually, like, kind of crazy to think about like wow like I, I really didn't have a break at all like in high school like sports you get like a week in between before you go to your next sport um this sport is all year round if like in August um uh, that was our preseason so we're you know working out conditioning making sure that we're conditioned and up to par mm-hmm. for when season comes around then when season comes around you're working on your techniques and your throwing ways and things in that nature, getting stronger, lifting, and all this stuff, and then you're um, critiquing certain things that you know needs to be improved on at the same time of um, worrying about, okay, I have this due for this class, so let me do this real quick before I go to practice, because then I can't do it, because I have practice this day, Um, and then you're like, okay, you can't, you have to be very, um, like, you have to be very aware of your time management, Mm -hmm. Uh, that, if, I've learned anything from college. It's oh, time, time management. management. Yes. And a routine. If you don't have a routine and you you're have not nothing. good with your time, you're going to fail. And I mean that with the most sincere anything. You cannot 
like just jack off and think that like oh i'll do it this day i'll do it later it's not a, like a later thing you have to do it now or it's never going to get done yeah or you're never going to have time to set aside just for yourself because even then like say monday comes along you have something due wednesday and you're like okay i have this time planned out monday i'm gonna get it done you're like oh i'll do it tomorrow the next day you have two other assignments to do. And Wednesday night comes around and you're like staying up it's on that. It's due at 11.59. Yeah. And I so need to you're get staying this up done. I need to yeah. get it done. So it's uh, definitely takes a toll on Child. physical, not only physical health, but definitely mental health. Um, there's a lot of feelings like put into it because then whenever you're so focused or you're angry or sad about things, you know, like... You don't really want to put that on your other roommates because they're going through other things with themselves. So then it causes problems between the people you actually live with. Then you have to figure that out as well on top of the entire list of things you have to do by yourself. That's another thing I wanted to touch on. Like living in a dorm. You, this is the first time that we have been like outside of our home, not living with family. We're living with friends. And while I adore you guys... I know that you know that I have trouble with, like, my mental illness, like, depression, anxiety, and when I get into these moods, I need to, like, isolate myself, and I feel like sometimes it's hard for, like, because I know a lot of people do that, but I think it's hard sometimes because you feel bad as a person because you feel like, oh, I'm pushing them away, they might think that I don't like them anymore, or... Like, something's going on, but it's, like, it's hard to talk about mental health with others because, like I said before, people think it's just for attention or it's, like, you're lazy or you're unmotivated, but I feel like at the same time, it's kind of something that you have to deal with or, again, you're going to push it down and you're going to explode on people, and that's not something that, like, anyone wants to do. So you guys think that, like, if you had a safer space to like let your emotions out or talk to somebody would that be something that you would do to make college and just life in general like easier an easier process i think um and this is just personally i think uh there was definitely a learning curve at the beginning of like you know living with people peers people my age people going through um I wouldn't say like I guess it would be similar things but also in completely different ways like we're all kind of going through the same emotions we were kind of going we were on the same ride we just were going different ways yeah and I think that definitely was hard but I think personally as we round up the year especially I think we kind of made a safe space yeah and it was really nice Obviously, all of us, you know, you have those days where you don't really want to talk to anyone, but that's kind of hard because you don't have, yeah, you you, live all together. Yeah. And then you have, uh, personally, like, I just, if I wasn't talking to you guys, if I needed an outside opinion, someone who was older, someone that, like, you know, just wasn't living in the same place Mm -hmm. as me, like, I would call my mom or call my grandma and obviously that also puts a little stress on them because then they think I'm not doing as well but just as a teen who deals with mental health it definitely is a necessity to either find a safe space where you can talk about your feelings and you can kind of let it all out or make a safe space Mm -hmm. so like bouncing off of what she said like Whenever you do have those days, like, you're not feeling your greatest, you're not in the right mood or whatever, um, you're, dear, you're like, um, you do need to talk to someone. But in our instance, we are the people that we usually yeah. talk to. So it's like, okay, now who do I talk to? Because, yeah, you can talk to your parents, but it's not like they're going to understand, totally understand, mm-hmm. understand the way that a peer your age would. And so then it comes back to the... Well, if I had a social life, maybe I could talk to someone. But being that, I don't. So I do isolate myself in that instance. So, And then sometimes, like, say there is, like, feuds or something between 
two people in the room or something, then, like, being the outside person, you feel like you have to be the peacemaker yeah. so, <laughs> in some way to, like, play so, that, so that we can keep peace in the room and just have, like, a normal, you know, environment so not everyone's walking around pissed and being angry at each other. And yeah. then you're like, okay, why are you angry? And then all of this, and you have to be a mediator. And it's just so many factors that go into it that, like, a person on the outside looking in, like your parents, would not understand mm-hmm. at all. Definitely like, it's not. It definitely something, like, you have to experience it to know what I'm talking about. Yeah, especially with, like, in this day and age, like, us being, like, Gen Z or millennials, we are very open with our emotions. We're super oh, like, sure. oh, I'm sad. Oh, I'm depressed. We, be- we I'm definitely angry. feel things more than yeah. the average person does. And I feel like with older generations, they don't express their feelings. It's more of like, yes, we push it down. We don't show those things. And being those generations, that's our parents. That's our grandma, our grandpa. Those are like our siblings and stuff. So it's hard sometimes to talk about it with them and have them understand like what we're actually going through without like it being like a cry for help it's more of like i need to get this off my chest and i I just need you to sit here and listen yeah like i don't need to give you advice yeah i just need you to listen there's so much unsolicited advice just in our day and age there's so much unsolicited advice like i've gotten to the point where there's people who i will talk to like let's say i talk to my boyfriend i will sit him down and i'll be like listen can you handle what I'm about to tell you yeah. right now? And can you just shut up and listen? Right. Don't say anything. I don't want advice. I don't want you to tell me that everything will be okay. Yes, I just want you to listen. Just hear me out. Don't say anything. If I want advice afterwards, I'll let you know. But just let me do right now. Just let me do the talking right now because right now I'm in this crisis and I just need someone to talk yeah. to. It definitely is hard, especially since, like, like you said, we're the people we usually talk to. Like, so it's like, who in, else do you go to whenever? Yeah. Because even our friends our age that are going to, like, college as well, they're going through their own stuff yeah. as well. And you yeah. haven't talked to them in, what, two, three weeks. So then <laughs> if you call them out of the blue and you're like, I'm depressed, yeah. I'm sad, I hate <laughs> life, like, I don't want to do this anymore. They're like, where is this coming from? And why do I feel the exact same thing? So it's, it's like you bounce emotions off of each other and you're like wow i didn't know you were feeling this and they're like yeah i've been feeling this too that's crazy how did we not notice and it's so weird because living together like there's just like throughout obviously there's points in time where i will mask my emotions and like even if i'm feeling upset like i'll still hang out with you guys and things and then like a few days later i'll be like listen i've been so just like i've been down all week and you guys will be like I didn't even notice. Yeah. And it's kind of hard. Because you're, like, so busy with yeah. your own life. You, you don't, don't see, see yeah, anything really outside don't. of what's going on in Jalela's world. So you're like, wow, you've been sad for, like, this entire week, and I didn't notice because I was on a high that I got a bad. good... Yeah. That I got, like, a good throw the other day in track. <laughs> and so I'm like, wow, I feel shitty because... I wasn't being that friend to you, or I wasn't yeah. helping you out with Or, like, I feel so. bad because I didn't notice. Like, yeah. you're my best friend. I should notice these things. But As an empath, same. I can feel <laughs> that you're going through something. <laughs> no, really. No, but no but it's, it's, it's hard because, especially in high school, like, you guys, when things were going terrible, you guys were the people I would talk to. Uh-huh. But it's not, like... There weren't so many factors going into... Yeah, like, we could drive around and just scream music or talk about our feelings. We don't have time to do that anymore. Ain't nobody driving around now with these (laughs) gas prices. Oh, my gosh. These gas prices, they definitely put a halt to it. We just gonna park in an empty spot in the parking lot and cry for a minute. Even then, we don't maybe cry for, like, two minutes. And you're like, all right, you gotta go do homework, dog. This is due at 11 Everyone, everyone set a timer on the phone. We're done. We're done being sad. Because that parking spot, we gotta get that going. We, you gotta get a good parking spot because, because I'm not trying to be late to class. I'll tomorrow. be damned if I park <laughs> at the back of the parking lot and I have to walk there that at five the thirty in the morning oh my God. to go to practice. And not only am I just driving myself to practice, I have to go pick up one of my teammates. So then you have to even get up even earlier. So you're like, 
I need this close parking spot more than anything yeah. ever right now. So it's like, how did this start in the parking spot? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, don't know. know. Mental health, parking spot, uh, dorm living, wow. same thing. <laughs> Truly. Well, I'm gonna let you guys do it. Oh, okay. Um, again, I'm Leilani, vocal music education major, coolest person you'll ever me ever she's lying wow just anyway love you. um if any students are listening to this or i'm sure that your professor is listening to this give us a break bro. truly please just please i'm gonna need gold a gold thursday too i'm gonna need a gold wednesday too i'm gonna need a gold four days a week <laughs> <laughs> anyways my name's jalila i'm a health and exercise ma- health and exercise science major uh I do track and field here. Um, if I've taken anything away from this um, conversation we've had, mental health matters. Don't push it to the side. Oh it gosh, definitely matters. Serious. Little things definitely matter. So that whenever like we are nature, doing things... I'm loving this right now. <laughs> so whenever Mom. we are going through things, please just like understand that it's something deeper than... We dropped our book and everything fell out. Yeah. It was so many other things leading up to that. <laughs> yes. So please just that let was us. just the tip of the iceberg. iceberg. So please just let us be dramatic in that moment. And that that was uh, that was Jalela Charlize and Lonnie with Three Thousand Eight Podcasts. Thank you. Thank you guys for doing the podcast and having a conversation with me. With that being said, I think there's a lot we can do to fix the problem. Vocalizing resources for mental illnesses, working with college administrators to correct the problem. Some of these being like reaching out to more students about the campus counselor or days where students are able to de-stress and have time off from homework or studying or even support from our professors. Another major issue that we could correct is to decrease the stigma around mental illness. Normalize the fact that everyone has dealt with a form of mental illness within their lifetime. And that not, that's not only going for college students, but everyone in general. Dealing with personal issues, as well as family and relationship issues. Giving students a safe place to talk about their illnesses and issues that they're dealing with can be helpful as well. And with that, I think we can end the podcast. Last thing I'd like to say is to go easy on students. We are already dealing with so much. Overwhelming us with school and very brutal schedules can be a lot for us to flourish and grow in our environment. With so much weight on our shoulders already, it can be hard for us to function and feel ourselves or to even do the best that we can do. As a student myself, I know dealing with so much already and still feeling the need to do great in all aspects of my life, I think it's a good thing for me to be able to give myself a break sometimes and to de-stress and feel like myself again. And with that being said, thank you for listening to the Food for Thought podcast. I hope it was very informational, and I hope that any college students or teens out there that are going through anything, I hope you know that you're not alone, and there is always help out there.